This is the best one I had yet. Hi everyone, good morning. Today is day three in Athens and I'm super excited. Look how beautiful the skies. It's actually the hottest day today that I'm here. It's high up to 15 degrees. I know I'm still wearing like a thick coat and everything, but it's a little chilly in the morning and at night. We are walking to the ancient Angora right now and then we're going to Aitanaki Museum later tonight. The ancient Angora is the second most popular site to visit after the Acropolis. I have the entire museum to myself. This is amazing. My favorite is the geometric era. Their designs are surprisingly modern. This is probably a child's potty. <laughs> One of the oldest potties is from the early 6th century BC. This is one of my favorites. It's a barbecue grill from the 6th to 4th century BC. On coin number 7 here is Athena's head. And the owl depicted there is on the $1 Greece coin today. It's one of the best preserved Doric buildings in all of Athens. There are six columns in the front and this is the entrance here. And on the sides there's 13 columns counting the end columns as well. And you can still see the friends all around the building. And some are sculptures and then some are left perhaps intentionally blank for paintings to be displayed. Made out of the same style as the Pantheon and the same marble and it's about half the size of the Pantheon if we want to compare sizes. Overall, I think the ancient Angora was absolutely worth a visit and it took me a little longer to explore this entire plot of land the heart of ancient Athens a little longer also because your ticket includes entry to the small compact museum but I love it I found I had to really follow the map that they provide you for free like really closely because you can kind of get lost they just look like piles of rubble like you can't really tell and then there's like a small sign probably that says middle stoa and then you look at the map you're like ah yes I know where I am but Overall, I think it was really cool to walk through this area to imagine what it would be like back in the day when Athens was at the highest power. So worth a visit in my opinion. I enjoyed it and with the reduced ticket, it was only five euros. So super great for like a morning visit. Do note that for winter visiting hours at least, they open at 8 a.m. and they close a little earlier at 3 p.m. but they're open every single day. The last story before we head down from the Temple of Hadesis is you can see in the back here, centaurs and men they're fighting here so the story is the centaurs crashed a wedding and they try to carry off the woman and then the lapins the men they were fighting the centaurs you can kind of see some of the scenes here this is emperor hadrian he was a great benefactor in athens in fact there are so many different historical sites you can still visit such as hadrian library etc. I'm definitely gonna go visit there. And if he still had his head today, you would see he's one of the first Roman empires to have a Greek style beard. These three statues feature the entrance of the Odeon of Agrippa. The head of the statue of this one here can be seen in the museum that we were just at. And it used to house plays and theaters. This is the Church of the Holy Apostle. It is one of, out of all the medieval monuments in Angora, this is the only one that's preserved. If you were to look at this church in a bird's eye view, you would see that it forms a Greek cross. Unfortunately, it's closed today, so we can't see the inside, but it does look fabulous. The stoas are absolutely amazing. And fun fact, the bottom of these stoas are smooth because it's supposed to, if you want to take a break and you lean against it, 
it's comfortable. In ancient Angora, like I mentioned earlier, this area was a shopping mall for you to relax, hang out, meeting point, and each one of these doorways represented an individual shop. Today, 10 of these are converted into the museum, the Angora Museum we visited earlier. This is the head of a triton from the Odeon of Agrippa. You saw him one of the three monuments with no head. Here he is. <laughs> Right outside of the ancient Angora is a little candy shop called Hans and Gretel. It's a super cute shop. The tons of things that can satisfy your sweet taste buds. In front of me here is Hadrian's library. You might pop in here another day. I picked up a little piece of candy from Hans and Gretel and I'm sitting right in front of the Hadrian library just observing. It's pretty cool. There is like, can you see? Anyways, it's just kind of fun just watching the street. We're gonna head to the neighborhood of Hyacy. This neighborhood centers around Iron Square. There's a couple of shops that are closed right now, and I suspect because they are bars that stay open late. And they also have indie shops, secondhand shops and just a really fun neighborhood to walk through and also lots of graffiti around this neighborhood i see two our guides here in greek so we know we're in a good <laughs> touristy neighborhood i'm gonna grab a little pastry or bread from this shop here they had a lot of different pastries inside but this was one that i see everyone eat during the morning i think it's more of like a breakfast food or a snack um, I see people like street vendors just sell it in the morning. A bread with sesame. I don't know if you heard that, but I'm so embarrassed sometimes when I'm filming. Somebody just walked past and was like trying Greek food for the first time, aren't you? I cut the video because I, I got kind of nervous. Um, but it's good. I like it. It's 50 cents, by the way. It's like a good like breakfast food. Very cool neighborhood. Definitely recommend exploring this a little bit. It's right outside of the main monastery key square. So it's a little bit, it's very close. Like only a couple of minutes walk. I love it. It's very interesting and different. I'm sure it's very different at nighttime when all the bars open as well. I really love to tour the inside of the Greek churches, but for some reason I can never find them being open. I think I one out of three or four of them have been opened that I've been able to get inside. It's only 3 p.m. so maybe it's, they're having a break right now. If anyone knows, let me know. This vintage shop is called New Skin and I love it. This is the exact jacket that I would usually get. I know I said this already, but this neighborhood is super cool. I did pick up a pair of handmade earrings here. So I'm really excited to wear around town. And now we're actually leaving now. I spent a couple hours exploring this neighborhood. Definitely a love. I'm really excited. I got another pie, of course. I love this stuff. I went to a place called Mam. They're so popular that they have two stores. And I got a meat pie. I actually really want to get the spinach one again, but I was like, okay, let me try something different. Mmm. Oh my god. This place is takeaway only. This is the best one I had yet. It's spiky. There's a lot of meat. I'm gonna go back. Love this place, it's so good. It's actually really warm today. I'm, a, I'm almost like overdressed. It's like 15 degrees. I'm like slightly sweating. That was so good. I'm definitely going back to this place. It's so buttery. Absolutely delicious. After walking along a very busy road, we've arrived at the Benaki Museum. Wow, the jewelry is exquisite. I love these geometric designs. 19th century. 
This one makes me so happy. Why? I don't know. It's cute. Love children's toys. The jewelry here is so opulent. These are gold bracelets. The first Cartier, you know? And these ones. So good. There's also rings here with precious stones. The first one, number 41, is my favorite so far. The jewelry you can see here is from 1st century AD. And some of those snake shaped rings we still have today. It's, it's like a modern design. The original Van Cleef from 6th century. The jewelry we just looked at was amazing from the Hellenistic period. Now we're entering the Byzantine world. Wow, this is amazing. Look how intricate this is. They sell a copy of this at the gift shop for like 1400 euros. The earrings you see with pearls originated from Mykonos. This room is gilded from the top to the bottom. This museum, Banaki, is absolutely so good. You have mostly seen the jewelry bits because I love jewelry, but they have so much. There's portraits, there's paintings, there's costumes, there's everyday life. There's just so much in here and I am so surprised. I actually thought it was way smaller. There's actually four floors but the top floor isn't open right now, which is, I'm actually in like a sense of relief because I've been here for three hours and I've rushed the last floor. I'm just so tired. And the other thing is today is Thursday and Thursday nights, admission is free for anybody. But even if it isn't, actually, I think it's well worth it. It's 12 euros and you get like hours of entertainment and history. Love it. And I do want to add one more thing here is that they have lots of QR codes on like their paintings and then you can just listen to an English or other languages audio guide and it's so good and they have also this VR experience which is kind of cool I'll pop in photos wherever but like like it's a really good museum totally worth it I mean I'm like you should do the Acropolis and all of that too but this was a really cool museum and I loved it I think I'm gonna finally leave now I'm gonna maybe find some food on the way back and just go to bed and get ready for my next day can you imagine this? this is a mansion this is a room from a mansion it's so intricate okay good night. oh cool there's a changing of guards apparently it happens every hour I just randomly came across it as a walking home. Here is the parliament building and with the crowd of tourists here, it's clear it's the changing of guards. This is the Hellenic parliament. I heard on Sundays the changing of guards is even cooler because they have a special occasion dress. I'm right by a super busy road right outside the National Gardens of Athens is this excavation sites of the baths. This was originally excavated because they were trying to build ventilation for the metro station and then they found this and they're like okay we won't build it here then. This right here is the Hadrian's Arch and on the other side we have through the gated fence, the Temple of Zeus. There should be, if I'm not wrong, 16 columns left of the original, and one has fallen over, so now there's 15 columns left standing. <laughs>